Form. Yes. Agenda was posted properly. Yes. Pledge of allegiance. Consider proposal for foundation work at Dublin Park Gazebo, including the point of new reinforced concrete piers. Do you want me to just go? No. Okay. So um, thank you everybody for, for making time for this. I really felt it couldn't wait until the next um, board meeting just due to the fact that that gazebo is not sitting on anything right now. They've got it braced, but um, we don't want to let it get too far behind, especially with Humberg's schedule. We don't, we don't want to. Wait, I did, just didn't feel comfortable waiting. So uh, <clears throat> we had Humberg begin the work this week, uh, and when they ripped up the concrete, we found that the only column of the gazebo that was sitting on a concrete pier was the one that Sean um, kind of partially excava excavated to see what the deal was underneath before we started with the gazebo project. So the, the other five, as you can see from the pictures, are basically have basically been sitting on an anchor to five inches of concrete, which would explain a lot of the problem. Um, in order to do it right, um, we need to spend extra money. This was done in 2005. I don't believe anybody, were you on the board in 2005? No. Um, I don't believe anybody was on, that sits on this current board was on that board. Lee's probably the only one. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. I'm about $4,000. Uh, I don't have enough money left in what we were authorized to spend. Uh, so we need your approval. And I guess my number one question, and it's to anybody and everybody, is how much liability should fall back to the developer and and or the building inspector? Um, to my knowledge, a building permit was not pulled for this. Okay. Um, so it was not inspected. Um, John DeWitt was the developer. He has been made aware of this situation, correct Mike? Yes, he was brought to the site. Um, do, have we had any, any feedback from him since Friday? The only feedback he provided was, um, you know, who his contractor was, um, and uh, they were copied. He had R.G. Houston put up the gazebo, but they weren't clear on who poured the foundation at that point. Um, and, uh, you know, like you said, I, we checked with Village Hall, and there was no 2005 building permit for it. Mike, who was Houston's? Were the subcontractor for DeWitt? They're the general contractor for his developments, okay. and, and I think they were. What he indicated was they were the contractor that put up the gazebo. Yeah. Maybe I, sorry, I missed this. I was at EMS training. What is currently holding up those columns right now? Right now, they're just sitting on. <coughs> two by fours. Slab yeah. On three, yeah. Two by they they were sitting on five inches of concrete, an anchor to five inches of concrete. The reason I ask is I I worked for a builder who. We literally built the house across from this gazebo at the time this gazebo was constructed. And I can tell you there was no, I, I don't recall any drilling piers, anything. So do we even have proof that there are piers there, in there? Yeah, you can see, uh, did everybody get pictures in their packet? Okay. Uh, you can see from the pictures that they were, there were, the money was spent to drill them There's and pour them, yeah. but they were doing, I mean, they were completely non-functional. It's like they poured they poured the piers, they poured the concrete, and then they guessed when they installed the gazebo. Yeah. I don't... So it's like a slab on grade because the piers aren't where they're supposed to be. Well, I don't know if the piers are not where they're supposed to be. If it, the one, there's one column that was anchored yeah. um, properly. I don't know if it shifted. It says to me that it wasn't measured right. I mean, right. if one is sitting, shouldn't they all be sitting? It's geometry. It's a six-sided thing. Yeah. It wasn't measured right. 
Um, yeah. It's egregious in my personal opinion. Um, yeah. But we can't put it back together. Right. No. I mean, yeah. we need to do it properly. I, I just, we got to go after it for this is my only thought. Um, we've had that conversation. Mm -hmm. At this point, I don't know if the legal fees are, are worth it. Um, the wash bay door. It's just disappointing. Yeah. Well, would they be willing to <clears throat> kind of donate towards the cause then, to as a good gesture to? I think that offer was made to um, John. <coughs> to provide uh, sixty-five hundred dollars to pay for it, and he didn't seem too interested in that at that point. I don't know if he'll have a change of heart. He's interested in the open coil salting thing. So he literally declined. So that, that's the information I have. Mike, you said that there was no building permit pulled. Was it supposed to be a building permit pulled? Well, it's yes, a, it's a building. Then that's and, and probably we'll, where it starts. I, mean, I talked to. I contractor talk to supposed to pull a yeah. building permit. Yeah. That's where it starts. It's 10 years, or a statute or not? Yeah, you're not going to really be able to. It's a, yeah, it's a move from a contractual point of view and. I, I, we got to be a little bit careful of tying in tying this in with his development. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. he's going to be coming in front of the plan commission as it is to um, ask for some amendments to his plat. We ironically we met with him on Friday about yeah. that and told him that um, he should understand that those amendments are probably a non-starter unless he um, comes to the plan commission with a plan to clean up everything that that still needs to be done. Um, but um, I, I would agree with Pat that you know the, the amount of legal fees you're going to spend to try to collect is just probably uh, I mean you're looking at what sixty five hundred dollars or six thousand dollars which um, is apparently I talked with Andrew Humberg the other night and he said that that is actually a deal it should be more more like eight thousand is appropriate um, but uh I think they feel bad for the spot we're in. There's just no way we could have known. So where does the money come from? It's in park development. I mean, we have the money in park development. Um, Are we taking from Peter now to pay Paul? No. Why not? Has this park used up its allotment or not? No. Well, the, the individual park had, um, back when because the park was already went in when DeWitt put the park in, that was about fifty grand, fifty-one grand, and that neighborhood specifically had about sixty grand. So there's roughly eight or nine thousand remaining for that specific neighborhood. But there are the undesignated funds that could be used anywhere that aren't tied to specific neighborhoods that are two hundred twenty-five thousand approximately after the the last audit. Wait a minute. You said 60 came in for the parks through impact fees? For, for specifically for that, that, coil, no, that coil north. And we spent 51. Right. So at least nine left. We've got 120 here roughly. So how, where is this? I'm a little confused on the dollars then, here. Then, then there, there are other park fees that can be used anywhere for any parks improvements in the village. So we're going to plot, we take all of our excess and put into one park, basically. Uh, good, a good chunk of it. There'll be about 100 and Five thousand left after that, and that that doesn't count other individual neighborhoods that have their own segregated park funds. Is that money controlled from the the ordinance that was written for us, or is that because the ordinance that I was sort of directed to, you know, it's designed for construction of parks, not repairs. So, well, what's we your solution? Well, I'm just looking for where the buckets, where the money's coming from. Yeah. I mean, it's got to come out of somewhere. We got to fix it. The social, we jumped into this back in April. The old board, without really doing due diligence, and now look what it's cost us. <laughs> and now, is this it? I mean, any more surprises for us? I guess because I'm tired of spending taxpayer money on chasing their tail here. So, is this it? There's nothing else left we're going to find. Because I'm not. I'll believe this one, but I'm done with this park. I don't feel that's a fair question. It is I mean, a fair question. We it's, couldn't have known that we were going to run into you, this. You knew the gazebo was the worst thing ever, right? The park was okay as it was. No. The park? What no. was wrong with the park? It was, it was a puddle. The drainage was wrong. But as, <coughs> but, right, but as far as this, found, this was the biggest thing we didn't know it about. It was never, it was supposed to have a basketball court from the get-go. It never got it. 
Well, 60,000 bucks, how could it get one? I'm just telling you that's what the neighbors were promised. It's not like we even, didn't even look to the gazebo. We excavated one of the piers, and it was fine. I don't know what more, I mean, if you could go back and do it differently, how would you do it? I'd okay. start there first, the gazebo. The problem child was the gazebo. The biggest problem child was the gazebo. It's been a safety issue for a long time. Right, that's and what I'm what was really awesome was that the project came along and the project was able to address that safety issue, which was really a great thing. What should have probably happened at that point, this is just me, but the basketball court probably should have been stopped. Other funds should have been diverted to fix that and then continue the investigation. Um, well, you all were on board before the project started. Why didn't you just say no, something? No, you approved the board. You guys approved at the lame duck session. Don't yeah. go there. At, at the point so you, could, of, you could have put it on the agenda to re reassess. If the money was spent? Money was not spent. You signed contracts. Uh, no. Yes, I wouldn't sign it. I know. Diane signed it. Diane signed the contract with Badger. Yes. Well, I mean, it has to be, hard, it, it has to be fixed. Anyway. I mean, I don't know that we want to take it out of the, it's got to be paid for. I don't know that we should take it out of the impact fees because that's not what the funds were designed for. Well, they aren't impact for fees. They are not impact <coughs> fees. They're, part They're of the park development fees. There are no impact fees for parks. There's road impact fees and water impact So where does, where, what is this general fund that's It comes from the from? developer. That's an but impact fee, right? So the developer, not when, an impact a, when a development is put in, the developer itself pays um, a fee in lieu of land. They either donate a land right. based on a calculation or they pay a fee in lieu of. Right. Then there's also um, a park development fee that each house Per dwelling case, mm. so that's and the correct me if I'm wrong. The developer one stays with the park with, with that neighborhood, and the per dwelling is the can be used anywhere. Is the general goes to the general park. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there's the document that I see says it's supposed to be utilized to construct parks and facilities. So now, like to the point of where we're taking money from being able to do other things for other areas to, to fix this issue. This is an issue that has to be fixed. It's a safety issue that's right. been no brewing for 10 years, so it has to be fixed. Um, the, at the point of the project going awry, at that point, yeah, it would have been better to divert and fix the, and make the repairs and change the directions and maybe cancel the basketball court or stop some of the other spending. The, I have no issues with doing this, but this is this is the only, I almost feel like this is the public works building all over again where it started at one number grew to another number then grew to another number and yet there's no accountability. So who who is the project manager for this job? The and who are we holding accountable? The general contractor is is Badger excavating. So who's the project manager in turn? Who's running this job? Badger excavating. Are they here? <coughs> so I, I'm, I'm, I guess my someone needs to be held accountable. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. that's okay. Um, but the, they have nothing to do with the gazebo. Badger excavating has nothing to do with the gazebo. We hired Hamburg to do so it. So who's that? Who's project manager of this job? So there's two projects going on. There's the park, and then there's this repair. We tried to implement. So we tried to use the subcontractor, the concrete subcontractor, mm -hmm. contractor, the Badger. Had. They were a fiasco. We mm -hmm. said we're not going to allow them to do it. Thank God we didn't because God knows what they would have done <laughs> when they got to the gazebo. So we went out on our own to get so Humber. The, the committee's then project managing it? No. I would guess. Day, day to day, Sean and, Sean and inspection MSA. But we, had the, we found this problem out literally Thursday morning. The, I think the issue is is that there was an issue with the park, and then when we re basically took the contract away from the the contractor that had the initial contract for the park and reawarded it to Hamburg, we didn't find the problem until after Hamburg started the work. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, we didn't know. 
so so the issue is isn't necessarily that we knew about this i mean yeah that we knew the gazebo needed work but we <coughs> didn't know the extent of the work until hamburg started the work that that we asked them to do we did so include the gazebo in the original proposal we included them as separate propositions because we wanted the park to go forward before we got to the gazebo because we didn't know exactly what we were getting into. We wanted to make sure we knew what we were getting into. That's why Sean did the digging. Then we went ahead and hired Badger again to, to or not Badger, Vogley, to do the concrete for the gazebo. In the meantime, they started doing the concrete for the playground and it was horrible. We took away that contract, hired Hamburg. They started that day, found the problem, and you knew about it that night. So the, the four thousand dollars that were over budget on the project? Under. <laughs> it says no, over, oh, over, over. I'm sorry. So I'm where sorry. Did, where was that from? That yeah. um there there was a um how large was the contingency Mike? Well, nine nine thousand. Nine thousand. Um a chunk of that was uh eaten up due to the basketball poles, uh the estimate in the the line item estimate had roughly four thousand dollars in there for that, but they weren't uh, playground grade poles, so that that ate up a chunk there. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> let's. Um, there's some potential legal fees that will come about that are in there, um, roughly a thousand dollars, maybe a little over. So that's not line item right now, or is that some, somewhere? Else? It's it's in there. It's just oh, not proposed. Built. Okay. Yeah, and then and then some engineering costs as well, and Mike can speak to that. Yeah, when um, you were looking over invoices um, early on at one of the board meetings, you indicated that we were you know at forty one hundred dollars bidding this out, and you know the annual park budget for engineering was three thousand dollars. <throat> Since then, we spent another uh, invoice for 282 and 253 during construction. Bottom line, I, I'm willing to take the engineering back to $3,000, you know, and 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 kind of send the 1880 back to the village, you know, to keep it with engineering within the the, the uh, parks budget for the year. So, with those, who approved those change controls for the basketball pole change, the legal fees? Now we're going to change control for the reduction of fees, which is good. Didn't have to. So who's approved, Matt? So who's approving those change controls? I can speak about the basketball polls. When, <clears throat> when the original bid came in for the basketball pole, polls, Mike put in a number of forty-two hundred dollars. After investigating those, they were not, they were not strong enough to withstand. They were basically a, uh, maybe a little bit of an upgrade from a driveway one. So at that time, I, I found ones that, that I've used before, and when I did the math based on the numbers that I had, we hadn't exceeded our $98,000. We were well under that. And so at that point, I, it was me that said, let's go with these poles because they're going to be safer, stronger, and last longer. So you approve the change control for that? Is there a formal process for that? Pretty much was. There, there isn't. It was, uh, you still have the tracks, though. I mean, it's, it's kind I of what I'm going with, for. Is, I, it, I, I, it has I, nothing I, to do with. It has to do with accountability of this stuff. So, it's four thousand over. I mean, it's within target, and but there's change controls. So, where's the accountability? Is around. I, I think his logic was that when when he approved that, it was well within. He wasn't concerned with it going over. But. So he made the choice. You made the choice to chew into the contingency. Uh, you get me, Alex? Yes. Okay. And as parks director, that seems like a logical and, place and, for it to land. But somehow he couldn't make a choice to attack the safety issue first and just continue with the basketball. I mean, because we certainly could have budgeted next year to put in the pole or so resurface it, you know, or some other improvement. We already had this, the money. It was we already it was already in there. The overage just that we're talking about tonight was completely unforeseen. It's the overage is a result there's, of the there's already a twenty thousand dollar overage. There was already a twenty thousand dollar overage that wasn't part of the project, which was fixing the concrete. 
What are you talking about? Right, the 19.3? That was, it was presented 15. in the beginning. It's always it was, been part of the project. It's separate. It's, it, they're they were just separate treated things. as two separate projects. So what's the 98,000 got us? I guess this right. I, was, I remember the meeting you guys talked about nothing more than 98,000 and... $98,000 was supposed to complete the gazebo and everything there. No, it wasn't the gazebo. Origi it yes, it was. Originally it was supposed to. Then it was, came in over budget. You guys yanked the gazebo out, if I remember that right. Yes. And that became separate. So is it... No, it was never presented as a, as a unified project. The 98000 was for the whole park. Without the gazebo. <laughs> Check the minutes on that. Doug. Yep. So we're talking about 125 grand now on this park. So on April 20th, there was two separate things that were approved. The actual bid for the park project was approved with Badgerland excavating, and then on that same mm -hmm. night, it was approved to have the. Um, the replacement of the concrete under the gazebo go out for quote. So they were two separate projects. The original bid for the park, not including the gazebo, and then a quote for the gazebo concrete. Right. And then we got that quote back. Right. And it was it was nineteen. Uh, no, it was fifteen. It was fifteen four eighty. Yeah. And then we took that away from Vogley, gave it to Hamburg. So we were still supposed to be within our authorized monies to spend. And two quotes was, part of it was to Miller, and part of it was to Badgerland. That's was the two pieces. No, no Miller was for the movement of the yeah right. the movement of the movement of the yes we had to use that playground yeah the playground equipment and that yeah. was included in the 98 the mill yes. movement yeah. yes it wasn't it was it was and then a part of the 98 but it was two separate motions yes yeah. just because they wanted to specify that miller would be used yeah And I think this question would be for you. The, the overall park fund, the, the, the balance in there can be used for any park in the village, is that correct? Yes. And that can be used for any purpose? That's my understanding. It's un undesignated. <coughs> Und okay. So was the Gazebo never brought in front of the board because it was below 25000 No, it was brought in front of the board. It was brought, it said to go get a bid. Yeah, so yeah, they already had the bid. We went and no, got a bid. The gazebo, they went out to get the quote. Right, it said that you had the right to go and out to get the quote. And then it came back the next mm -hmm. time, the next board meeting. And then the bid, the actual bid for it after the quotes came in, was approved on June 1st to vote the and then the next meeting, it was taken away and given to power on the June 15th meeting. That's in the timeline. Mm -hmm. Yep. <coughs> I think it's got to be done. I'm just yeah. expressing oh, yeah. my just. It's interesting, just pleasure here to well, like I so I don't think can anybody's focus focus happy about it. Can, can I make a motion? <laughs> Lead a, with an amendment attached to it? Uh, what's the motion? I'd like to uh, make a motion to approve the project, but I also want uh, to change Parks and Rec's Thursday night meeting to being on the agenda the following Monday. I want that shifted somehow. Uh, I how about that? we make the motion to approve and then make a separate motion because I'm trying time to, I understand what you want to do here, but um, I, I mean, you can make the motion, but I think it'd be better to make two separate motions. And should that second motion be tonight or should that actually be Monday night? No, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's separate. Yeah. Okay. You can put it on the agenda for Monday. Yeah, this, this Friday agenda stuff is going to stop. 
And what, what would you guess staff time on this project ballpark me? From start to finish? Sure. Well, since the Goldie disaster started. Um, Twenty hours is probably fair. Okay. <clears throat> what are you trying to say? I'm just tired of our staff chasing their tail. We need to move forward. Let's get this put to bed and be done. From the police station, public works building to this, it just continues. The the trend continues. So let's get this. This is more discussion. Somebody to make a motion. I have no more discussion for it. Sorry, did you make the motion? No, I didn't. I was okay. just asking a question. Okay. I just think this. I guess my last statement is we just need to pay attention to all these things, I guess, at the end of the year and make sure we have the right people in the right place that are looking out for the right interests in the village. You know, could what have are you trying it. to say? I'm not if you have an accusation. Would you quit, would you quit implying right things? He's, he's making a statement. Um, he's talking about, he could be talking about staff. I'm talking about staff. I'm talking remember about that Washington, D.C., remember? Yeah. That, Wait, right, uh, exactly. Well, exactly. So basically, I think staff could have done a better job at administrating this project and raising the flag earlier, stopping other things, and, and doing the correct thing of getting the repairs. I don't know how no much one's quicker it could have been. If the gazebo was so bad, that thing should have been dug into an off whatever it had to be done. That should have been dug around the whole thing. That thing was so horrible. And we're spending $25,000. We should have done a little better due diligence. That's all I'm saying. Plan the work, work the plan. Well, there's a certain, I would say that there's a certain amount of responsibility that falls back to the contractors to make sure that they give us the right information. Uh, well, I, I agree, but again, it's up to these boards for the last 10 years to do their due diligence. And again, it's up to be able to the, the project manager, the person in charge, whoever signed in the change controls to know what they're doing to make sure the correct decisions are being made. If they need help, they should ask for it. And, you know, Making changes and all that other stuff is fine if that's within your realm, but you better understand what you're doing. And now we're thirty thousand dollars over on this project. We are not thirty thousand dollars no, over on this project. I don't know. I, I don't where know where you're getting thirty thousand over, Alex. From. Well, Please illuminate. Getting the four thousand from over for the project that it is right now, and then the other thirty thousand dollars for the repairs. There, no, there's no thirty. For twenty twenty-five twenty-five eight for the repairs. So for the gazebo, but that was approved. That's not. It's not over. It was approved at 15. It was approved at 15. No, over 11. Plus four. Four, it over just, 15 it just, it, The original intent was to beautify the park for 98 change. And now we're up to 100, almost 130. And it's just to, not to, a fair statement. to <laughs> keep coming in. So there's going to have to be accountability. It's like saying you buy a house and then you add you add an addition on to it and then you say you're over by the amount you added the addition on. That's not fair. That's not even true. I don't know that's a good analogy, but if I know I wanted the addition, I'd stop building my garage. The bid was fifteen thousand. We're over ten thousand dollars. We are we this this issue is going to put us ten thousand eight hundred dollars over. And we're already forty three hundred dollars off on the No, over. I'm including the forty three. Then we had to change the contractor from Vogley to Hamburg. Yes, but I believe that we were still within our authorized amount to spend. But that's that where change. the other four grand is, is that they're talking about, is the difference there. Just because they Vogley didn't do their job, basically. Yeah. I'm we're not, not 30 I'm not blaming anybody. I'm saying that whoever developer comes in here, we need to clamp down and make sure they do their job right. Whatever they tell us they're going to do, then MSA, and staff, everybody's going to follow you and make sure they do it right. We're okay. not going to get shortchanged anymore. And at quote, can I, I have been at that park, and Sean has been at that park. We've had them dig that concrete out four times to say that we're not doing our due diligence and holding you, our that's, contractors that's, that's to what I'm saying. task. We due certainly diligence are. With, no, due diligence was that we picked a lousy contractor, didn't we? We had to. They were the best bid. No, that's not true. I think, is that true? Is that right? Right? Well, I'm the lowest responsible bidder. Responsible yeah. bidder. And we know about these guys. Let me just make a comment too. This this was uh, Dublin Park 
occurred in 2005. And the village board at that time decided what they were going to do was let developers build uh, facilities in lieu of their responsibility for dedication of, of land or fees. And that's how this all came about. And th it wasn't a great idea then. Uh, some of us said, how do you really check to see what's, what's happening? And it turned out to be a bad decision. And I think that Dublin Park is the only one that, that we did that with. So that's, that's how this all kind of came about. So it's, it's a long time building is what you're saying. That park has not been right from day one. It wasn't built to what the neighborhood was promised. It's full of concrete. Uh, and now we've got, I mean, this gazebo being not even aligned properly. There's a lot of things John DeWitt didn't do that he was supposed to do in that subdivision. And John DeWitt will be held accountable the next time he comes to this board. Yeah. Oh. I remember <coughs> arguing with him last time in this year. <laughs> I just have a question for Matt. Is it, I guess, I'm just confused on why the gazebo portion even went to the board to begin with being below that dollar amount? Is that common practice to split it up into two projects or? Can, can I answer that? Sure. We, an we did it because we didn't have a bid for the gazebo. We wanted to get that part. The whole idea of that part was to get in there and get it done so the neighborhood could use it. That's gone well. <laughs> I mean, every step of the way, that park, every section of that park has been a true nightmare. Uh, and then we had lots of rain. It's just been one one disaster after the next. But the idea was to get the park part moving so that could be usable for the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And then, because we didn't even have a bid for the gazebo yet, we didn't even know if it was feasible to do how expensive it was going to be. That's why Sean dug the pier out, the one that, the only one that was good. Um, so that's why it was done that way. But you wouldn't have really had to come to the board? Yeah. Right? Yeah. You still come to the board. The, the, we the didn't threshold, put it out to bid. If it's, if it's over 25, Grand, then you have to do um, a, a formal class two notice. Yes. So we're cl class two notice to uh, bid that out. If it's between five and under 25, um, then class it's uh, class one. Um, but so you still have to come to board, board for in both cases. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Getting it done quickly was very important, um, but I, I would rather do it right. And I don't want a board 10 years from now going, what the heck were they thinking? Why did they do that? You know, like we are to that, the 2005 board. It's ridiculous. I don't know what they were thinking, but they did it and we're cleaning up their mess. And it stinks, but it needs to be done properly. I, I'll, I will apologize for the timeline being skewed, but I will, will not be able to live with myself if we don't do it properly because we were trying to rush through it. That's just unacceptable. I will go ahead and make a motion to approve um, the bid for, uh, for Humber Construction to replace the, to repair and replace the uh, gazebo and concrete piers at Dublin Park uh, for 25810. Is that, was that the correct amount? Uh, just no, just the 60. Oh, just the, six, the additional 6500. I'll second it. Good. We have a motion and a second to approve Hombre's bid of $6,500 to reinforce the concrete piers in their discussion. I just have <clears throat> one more quick question. Is there any additional costs that get added from this, just like MSA costs? I know you already said you'd take your bill down, but is there any other costs that kind of linger with the approval of this? For the gazebo itself? Right. We pull the permit this time. Do we pay ourselves? Well, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah. I just um, uh, I'm, I'm sure should be pulling a permit. Okay. Um, are, are there any other inspection costs? No. Okay. Thank you. The inspection costs in this court, I'm sure. Right? The inspection costs inside of the court. Uh, there is there is a building building permit. Yeah. But his, the cost will be inside that. Court. Any other discussion? All favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Motion to adjourn. Second. And motion to adjourn. And second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 aye.